Across 20 seasons as a player on baseball's largest stage, Derek Jeter's performance on the field and how he handled himself off it appeared innately effortless. But as a newly minted Pertowner executive CEO with the Marlins, Jeter has come across as someone lacking in intrinsic business acumen. Jeter has fired longtime popular staffers from all levels and departments within the Marlins organization, including a scout suffering from cancer, and is set to par down payroll with the league's reigning MVP, Giancarlo Stanton, the lead domino. The moves have, at least temporarily, shaken his place atop the baseball pedestal and tarnished the public reputation that was previously near flawless. More the latest Giancarlo Stanton trade rumors for Jeter, playing baseball came naturally. He thrived on the required effort to outwork competitors and reach the pinnacle of the game. Jeter succeeded, becoming a Yankees icon as he helped New York win five World Series titles. All the while, Jeter made certain his play dictated the conversation about him. But Jeter's shiny exterior has a dulled since taking charge of the Marlins' as baseball and business operations he has a 4% share in ownership overall. The difference is clear Jeter, unlike in his playing days, was not fully prepared for what lay ahead, and he has seemingly failed to surround himself with a solid transitional team to help. Jeter's decisions, or at least the decisions that have occurred on his watch as CEO, may be rational, but the way in which they have been carried out has been viewed as cold, even heartless. Within a week of the sales commencement, Jeter fired special advisors Jeff Mr. Marlin Conine, former Marlins manager Jack McKeon, and Hall of Famers Andre Dawson and Tony Perez all key figures in the organization and the types of individuals it wouldn't hurt to keep on even if for a temporary vetting period to determine whether they could facilitate a smooth transition. Jeter backtracked, offering them lesser roles and a substantial pay cut but each decided to decline. More Marlins owners looking for infusion of cash last week, it was revealed that the Marlins fired Marty Scott, a scout with 40 years of experience in the game and seven seasons with Miami, while he lay in his hospital bed recuperating from surgery related to his battle with colon cancer. There may well be more to this story, but the optics are so drastically poor that one has to wonder about a lack of self-awareness among the leadership group. Concerning player personnel, the fact that the group is looking to significantly drop payroll shouldn't be a shock. Jeter and the rest understand the organization cannot rebuild with an exorbitant amount of time and cash, Stanton is owed $295 million across 10 seasons, wrapped up in one player. In today's game, the teardown style of rebuilding has proven to work, so why wouldn't Jeter and co. pursue the same angle? The reasoning to trade Stanton is sensible, but the undertaking has been anything but smooth. Many expected the well-mannered Jeter to pick up the phone, introduce himself and have a simple chat with Stanton, especially with a potential trade in the offing. Jeter declined to do so and, as recently as the general manager meetings last month, had yet to contact Stanton directly. In the latest development in the saga, Stanton was reportedly presented with an ultimatum about waiving his no-trade clause or being stuck in Miami as the sole star player with the rest of the top talent sent packing. The notion that the ownership group led by Bruce Sherman would desire to perform wholesale changes from the executive level down to the scouts and the roster is fairly standard operating procedure. When any corporation is sold, those taking control typically wipe away the fingerprints of the previous regime leaving their own behind in an effort to distance itself from the predecessors. However, certain key figures often stick around as transitional pieces. That aspect has been tricky for Jeter. While Jeter retained Marlins president of baseball operations Michael Hill, under contract through the 2020 season and with the organization since 2003, the relationship may not be evolving as necessary. Jeter required someone who could minimally pump the brakes on what might be perceived as controversial or ill-advised decisions. Maybe Hill tried to avert some of the PR mess that Jeter has created, but if he has not, Jeter failed in finding an individual who could articulate the opposing side and potentially harmful ramifications of certain judgments. More Jeter vows to bring winning culture to Marlins Perhaps many believed Jeter was going to immediately remove the sour taste from Jeffrey Loria's tenure. The former Marlins owner dismantled the roster twice, and be the antithesis to the man many fans despised. Though Jeter has done little to change the vibe among fans, it's fair to ask whether the denouncement of his stormy beginning as the ownership's face is about the decisions themselves or about the crude nature by which they seemed to have been delivered. At this point, someone within the Marlins organization, someone with a larger ownership stake, has to step in and suggest to Jeter that regardless of the reasonableness of the organization's strategy, the optics may prove damaging.
Eventually, Jeter will want to lure top players to Miami. His handling of direct reports and player personnel will not be forgotten and could be detrimental to the future growth and success the Marlins seek. As a player, Jeter was never in over his head, demonstrating an innate ability to rise above the competition on and off the field. Thus far, Jeter has been unable to translate that into being an executive. Imprudent decisions stemming from unpreparedness and or unwillingness to take advice from someone with experience in the role show Jeter as business executive is not a natural fit.